Jesu, quanti tibi constiti dit, esse Jesum Salvator meum. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In this great feast of the holy name of Jesus, as it coincides uh, with the circumcision of our Lord, which was yesterday, and upon circumcising our Lord, it was imposed this name from heaven. It's a heavenly name. It's not invented by human beings. And so this phrase we quoted right before, just now, is, Oh, Jesus, my Savior, how much it costs, has cost thee to be Jesus. We must remember that this name was given to Our Lady on March 25th of the, Annun of the Annunciation. And therefore, St. Gabriel said these words, and his name shall be called Jesus. Luke chapter 1, verse 31. So we know for sure that this is a name that is given by God himself, which basically means to save, a Savior, saving us from our sins saving us from the fires of hell. Now, it is a name of gladness, hope, and love. Those three things. Let us briefly look at these three things so that we can perhaps continue this day reflecting on this holy name. Gladness. The remembrance of our sins afflicts us roundly. Many people do not overcome the psychological damage of their sins. They wallop in self-pity and many of them fall into great scruples. And even, they can even become afraid of their own shadows. But Invoking this name, remembering this holy name of Jesus, encourages us unto salvation. And they began to believe the words of the Holy Sacrament. I absolve thee from thy sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. So therefore, the holy name brings us gladness and serenity. But it also brings us hope. He that prays to the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus may hope for every grace that he asks for. How can we coerce God by a formula or a ritual? Isn't that bold? No, it's just obedience to Jesus himself who said, if you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it you. John chapter 16, verse 23. Now many say, he doesn't give me everything I ask for. What's going on? Uh, why isn't our Lord true to his words? But notice how we worded it to begin with. For every grace... He asked for, not for every whim that he asked for. And even St. James will tell us that often our prayers are not granted because we ask amiss. We do not ask with the right dispositions. And God will never grant us anything that is not according to his holy will. And that we should thank him for that. Uh, because this life is so short, it's one, it's hard but it's extremely short. And so therefore, if God gives us everything that we ask for in this life, then in eternity, if he gives us only our whims or things that are not according to his will, then we will have a downgraded eternity forever. <laughs> in other words, he's not granting us things because he knows that that will take away a few of the 
nuances of perfection for all eternity. It, were we to have some sort of a, a benefit or favor, and then we might enjoy it scrumptiously here in this, in this earth, on this earth, but once we reach eternity, we'll find out very quickly how few notches downward we would go, and that'll be our existence forever. So, like the Blessed Virgin, full of grace, she, she would only ask for more crosses and more penances in order to sacrifice herself for her son. And therefore, her soul is like, you know, the massive barrel the size of Texas, two, deep, two miles deep. And, and so, when upon her finishing this life, then her soul is filled with divine charity. But we, if we keep, if we keep asking for our little whims, give me, give me this and give me that, that things that are not accord with God's holy will, then we're like a little shot glass. We go into eternity with a little shot glass and just a tiny few drops of uh, divine charity, yeah. well, which, which would be good enough for, for, for anyone. Uh, but God wants us to be a little bigger, kind of like a, a barrel of sorts, not just a shot glass. A shot glass is too puny, uh, too tiny uh, for God's plans. Uh, so, so therefore we have to think about this. Yeah. And then lastly, this holy name should engender within us love. Love. Amor con amor se pague. You know, love with love is paid back. Love is paid back with love. St. Bernard says that the name of Jesus is a sign that represents to us how much God has done for the love of us. The exceeding charity of Christ, the charity of God. This has been the whole theme for this whole Christmas season. The exceeding charity of God, the mercy of God. And so this name, which means Savior, reminds us of his love. That is how much he has suffered for our eternal salvation. As St. John in his epistle would say, love is, resides more in the doing than just the speaking it's not just mere words but rather it's where the rubber meets the road where it hurts where it hurts there is where love true authentic love starts is where it hurts we give it to him and our Lord gave everything for us for this St. Alphonsus says O oh, Jesu, quanti tibi constitit esse Jesum, Salvatore meum. O oh, Jesus, my Savior, how much it has cost thee to be Jesus. Therefore, we shall race to our kneeler later on today with acts of gladness, acts of of love and acts of hope. But let us start by coming to the communion rail for those of us who are able to, to receive the sacred flesh of Christ. And let us be engulfed in a glowing colloquy with our Lord and say these or other words. O Lord, as thy servant, St. Jane de Chantal, branded her breast with thy holy name with a hot iron, so too, I beseech thee, do thou write thy name upon my poor heart and upon my feeble tongue, in order that when I am tempted to sin, I may resist by invoking thee. 
Make me therefore always call upon thee, O my Jesus, and to live and to die with thy holy name upon my lips, saying even with my last breath, I love thee, O my Jesus, my Jesus, I love thee. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs>